Hi, so I'm just going to do a new little video of adding binding. So I've got this baby quilt and I just want to show you, I've prepared a whole roll of my binding. So what I did is I cut strips at, I used two and a half inch wide. Um, you can do it slightly narrower, but I always find this gives me a better finish and it just works for me. So it's two and a half inches and it's folded wrong sides together and pressed along the fold. Now it's really important that you take the time and get that just accurate all the way along. Now at the start, this is going to be my a section where we actually finish. And what I've done is instead of it just being folded in half, I've made a little diagonal fold and that gives me the sort of little slot that the, when I finish, is going to tuck into, which then gives me a nice finish at the end. So I've got my machine set up and I'm going to do this with a nice mitered corner, which to me is the, gives a nice, more professional edge. So I've got my binding and I'm going to lay it so that the raw edge of the last frame on the quilt and the raw edges of the binding are sitting together. Now here's the end and I'm going to start a couple of inches beyond that. I want that part loose so I can tuck the tail in at the end. Now I've got the quarter inch foot on and I've put the needle down just to secure it. Now if you've got lots of layers or if your wadding is quite um, thick, got quite high loft, you might want to increase your stitch length. Now I find I'm going to go up to three and just see how that feels. Just because I've got the backing, the wadding, the frame and two layers of binding. Now I've got my quarter inch foot on, you might want to use another foot, but try and keep that seam allowance. If I keep it at a quarter inch, then that gives me enough space left over for when I fold it over to the wrong side. So I'm just going to sew till I get to the first corner. Now I'm just letting the machine carry the fabric and I'm keeping it under the level with the edge of the quarter inch foot. Use whatever tool works for you for this, but do try and keep it even. Now, what we want to do is stop a quarter of an inch from the edge here. So I'll just use my fingers just to keep those layers in and stop. Now, I'm going to lift the needle, lift the foot, pull the quilt away from the foot and then I'm going to turn it through 90 degrees. Now I'm going to take the binding, I'm going to fold it all the way to the back. So I've got a nice angle across here and a nice square here. Then pull the binding back down so what we've got now is a little fold. We're then going to put the quilt back under the machine, put the foot down, put the needle down. Now it's secure. So you can see we sewed along here. We've now got this fold and that's what's going to give us the mitered corner. So I'll start sewing again. Now it's important to make sure that your binding stays level with those raw edges. So what you don't want to do is get to the end and find you've missed a bit. Now, I don't pin this or use clips because I've still got the excess of wadding and backing in place. So just take your time. Keep unwinding the reel. Florence Knight in bandages, as I always reminds me of. So it's important to have the binding in one length. So I've sewn together, uh, I think, six lengths. And I've just done square seams. I haven't 
done any bias seams because it's I'm not making bias binding. I know some people do like to join the seams on the diagonal. That's absolutely fine. So here we are again. We're a quarter of an inch from the edge. Fold the binding so that it's going away from the di direction we're going to sew. So we've got a nice square part there. Then without pulling that away, bring the binding back towards you. Put the fabric back under the machine. Put the needle down. Keep it safe. And keep going. Now, I've just got a tiny thread that's got caught.